Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is probably a little bit of a different setting than what you guys probably are expecting from coming to my channel because you, if you've seen my channel, it's mainly Valorant clips, some Apex from like years ago, um, and just kind of like gaming stuff. Um, but I wanted to start this new YouTube tech series here that is f more focused on kind of, you know, my hobby, what, what I do for work, and, and essentially is tech, building servers, maintaining things, building services, and things like that. I mean, it is honestly a lot of fun. I'm very passionate about it, uh, and I just love doing it. So I wanted to kind of um, pivot over and kind of also make some content around building a home lab, um, what to expect, what to do with it, and how to have fun with it, honestly, at the end of the day. So um, if you're coming for just the tech and you didn't even know I would, I played Valorant, go check out my my Twitch. Um, it is pretty fun. I try to stream almost day on a daily basis. Um, granted, you know, if, if I have other things come up, I won't, but it's a lot of fun. Check me out. We have a good time. We usually do like Team Deathmatch now that it's out. Um, but Spike Rush, Swift Play, I mean, we just try to have a good time and send positive vibes. So um, if you're just looking for a chill time, come check me out on Twitch. Also, this video is sponsored by me, myself, and I. So if you are wanting to be a sponsor, feel free to put a business inquiry in um, to my email and link in the description. Uh, and maybe I can shout you guys out. I have a lot of tech, as you can see. Got the HyperX, got a Razer webcam, got the Huntsman keyboard. I mean, I'm a gamer. So send me, send me any tech. I would love... Um, you know, to do reviews on things like that. And I mean, it, it, it would be great. So if you guys are, if, if some of you guys watching that would love to sponsor me, let me know and, uh, and send me an email. So, um, but to get started here, we will be essentially building, uh, or at least starting, you know, how you would start a home lab. Um, we, I, I made a few assumptions here and, um, essentially, the, the, the two assumptions that I have is you've already installed um, VMware and vCenter and you have those fully running, essentially. Um, in the case you don't and you would like a video about it, put it in the comments. I might, I might be able to come build, do that for you guys. Um, I, I don't, it's a lot harder to do physical hardware kind of installs, but you know, if you're really itching for that, Put it, put it in the comments and we'll, we'll we may create one so um but those are the two assumptions that we're making here um so essentially we'll pretty much get started um we'll log into my virtual machine you'll get to see a few things here um and we will pretty much go through um the first the first episode here will essentially be just you know picking picking an iso and uploading it to vcenter because if you don't have an iso you essentially can't build anything. Um, for those of you guys who are wondering, what is an ISO? An ISO is essentially just um, a image that allows you to install an operating system on your hardware or on your virtual machine. So like when you have like Windows on your computer, it came from a built image. That's what it is. And that's what an ISO is. Um, so in this case, what we're actually going to do um, is download a Linux distro. So there's like a ton of Linux distros. I'm not gonna go into depth into pretty much any of these, um, but for the most part, you can pretty much classify it between a few major ones where you got like your, your Debian, which is like kind of like Ubuntu stuff. And then you got like your Red Hat, which is like CentOS, Fedora, and, and that side of things. There's obviously a lot of other forks in here, as you can kind of see as I looked at Linux distros here. So don't feel overwhelmed. If you're not sure what you what, what to pick, you're probably going to pick between like a Debian versus a Red Hat. Um, in my opinion, I'm going to pick CentOS um, because I've used that more intensively. Um, I do love Ubuntu. I actually started off with Ubuntu at first, but I kind of came about CentOS a little bit more on the Red Hat side for more production related systems um, for long-term support um, because Ubuntu is, is uh, a lot more, um, just pushing towards, hey, you know, latest and greatest type situations. So you want something that has more of a long-term support um, operating system for, you know, packages and things like that. You don't want always the latest and greatest. Um, so in this case, we're gonna go with uh, CentOS 8. Um, so the other thing with the CentOS project here um, is they're also going for the latest and greatest. So 
they came out with CentOS Stream, which is essentially just trying to get ahead of you know the game and get the latest and greatest packages. Um, so usually I would avoid this for you know a production system, but this is a home lab. We don't really care. It's it's here for fun, learning purposes, right? Um, there's really not much difference between CentOS 8, CentOS 7, CentOS 9, as you can see, there's a 9 now, um, as well as, you know, Red Hat and other, other Red Hat distributions. So, in this case, we're going to go with CentOS 8. Um, I usually don't like doing the latest and greatest either, so, like, we don't do 9, so we do 8 because it's more stable. Um, and... For the most part, we're just gonna go download this ISO. Um, now, you probably need to know what architecture you're doing. In this case, probably about 90%, you're probably gonna pick x8664. That's probably going to be the architecture that you're gonna actually be running on. Um, unless, unless you're running like a Raspberry Pi or something like that, um, then you probably want the ARM processors. Um, for the most part, you if, if you're running like an actual physical server, you're probably going to need x8664. Um, worst case, you download both, you try both, one of them's going to work, one of them's not going to work, right? It's a lot of trial and error when you first learn, but for the most part, you're probably going to get this. So, from that, you're going to download the ISO. Now, CentOS doesn't exactly necessarily have <laughs> ISOs on their website, mainly because, I mean, ISOs are huge. Like, they take up a lot of data. Um, so, in this case, they give you a list of uh, mirrors that they would recommend for you to go to. Um... Now you're like, oh my god, there's a lot of mirrors. Which one do I pick? Um, and the, for the most part, because you're coming from the CentOS website, you're probably fine to pick any of these mirrors. Um, but you also want to be careful because, like, if you see something that looks like a sketchy, you know, like site, you might. I don't. I don't know if I really want to do that, right? Um, so in this case, I'm just gonna just pick one. Um, usually, I go for like the EDUs um, because you know, it's a college. You're most likely going to download a legit ISO. Um, so with that, we're going to go down here. Um, we're going to actually download the latest. Um, and it's also, um, in this case, 11 and 0.5 gigs, um, which is a lot. Um, so you just click it, it'll start downloading. Um, we'll see how long this takes. We'll probably fast forward the video so you don't have to actually wait with me here for like six minutes as I ramble about Nothing, essentially. Um, actually, but we can actually kind of get started here a little bit to kind of get the prereqs things here. So, with that, um, this is vCenter. If you've never seen it, you probably need to install it. Um, but, for the most part, um, this was the assumption that we I made that you already have vCenter set up. Um, you might not have anything in it, but you have it set up. Um, so, with that, um, if you would like me to show you how to set up vCenter, please. Put it in the comments. Um, uh, so from here, we'll actually add a um, storage folder. So I have multiple data stores. So this is this is like my local storage. This is my NFS storage. Um, for the most part, you probably only have one, um, and that is totally fine. Um, as you're learning. So what we're going to actually do here is this is kind of what I'm using for my my series here. Um, we will create a new folder. We'll call it ISOs. So the reason we want to do this is we kind of want to keep it all contained in the storage of where all of our ISOs are. Because as we start creating virtual machines, we will essentially start, the there will be directories that are created for each virtual machine, which will start clustering this kind of um, data store in regards to like, it's like a file structure, essentially. You're going to have a lot of files. You're going to have a lot of things. So you're going to be like, oh my God, there's, there's all these ISOs I'm trying to find versus all these you know virtual machines that are out here. So what I would highly recommend, create an ISOs folder. We're going to just drop all of our ISOs in here so we can easily find whatever ISOs that we need, right? Um, and it'll, it's it's going to be easy. So we are going to wait for the for it to finish installing here, and then we'll fast forward this video um, to the point when it's done installing, and we'll show you how to upload. All right, now that is actually finished downloading, guys, as you can see here at the lower left-hand corner, we will actually now upload the ISO. It's super easy. You just click Upload Files. Well, you want to select the, direct, the, the folder that we created originally, Upload Files, pick the ISO, and hit Upload. Now, we'll probably also fast forward this again um, for when it actually is completed. <laughs> All right, now that you guys can see, we have officially uploaded the CentOS 8 stream 
um, <clears throat> ISO here. So that will now allow us to create virtual machines from this ISO um, in here. So with that, that concludes our first video um, in regards to how to kind of get a little bit started um, and and get an ISO uploaded. Um, in our next video, we'll be talking about how to create an actual virtual machine template from this ISO so that we can go through the build process of this um, and make sure that we can reuse a build um, without having to go through that whole process all over again. So um, if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, um, and we will see you guys all in the next video. So thank you for stopping by, guys.